In the year 1958, a team of Air Force pilots were in the middle of conducting experimental flights using an X-2 rocket plane. They are known as Team Daedalus, consisting of four members, Frank Corvin, William Hawk Hawkins, Tank Sullivan, and Jerry O'Neill. The four members were the best in their field, being the most experienced risk takers in the Air Force. They actively engage in special programs, aspiring to be the first Americans to set foot on space. Two of the members, Frank and Hawk, pilot the rocket plane with Tank as their navigator. Jerry, the team's flight engineer, observes their status on the ground. During the test flight, Hawk attempts to push the limits of their aircraft by flying higher than their height record. However, the rocket plane malfunctions, causing Frank and Hawk to abruptly eject themselves before it crashes. Frank is pissed and punches Hawk as soon as they reach the ground. He reprimands Hawk for being careless while flying the aircraft. As Frank initiates a fight, Hawk punches him back. Fortunately, Jerry arrives not long after and breaks up the fight. The space program official and Team Daedalus's boss, Major Bob Gerson, summons Frank and Hawk in his office afterwards. The two pilots report that they have crashed the X-2 rocket plane, but they did break both their speed and altitude records. Bob argues that they have crashed three planes in 10 months, criticizing them for their performance. Later, Bob takes Team Daedalus to a press conference wherein he announces about an apparent directive from the President of the United States. He informs everyone that the Air Force's involvement in outer atmosphere testing and exploration is officially terminated. The studies on space programs are handed over to another civilian agency known as the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. What's more, the Project Daedalus, created and managed by the four members, has concluded. Bob also introduces to the public a monkey named Mary Ann, referred to as the first American to cross into outer space. Despite hearing about the news for the first time, Frank and the entire team Daedalus have to conceal their surprise and disappointment. The press conference ends as Frank is forced to shake hands with the monkey. In the present day, the four members of Team Daedalus go their separate ways. Frank has retired as a veteran U.S. Air Force pilot and is happily married to his wife, Barbara. Hawk went on as a widowed charter pilot participating in aircraft rentals and joyrides. Jerry continued as a structural engineer who builds roller coasters. Tank indulged himself with the divine by becoming a Baptist minister. On the other hand, Bob is promoted as the project manager of NASA. He works alongside Sarah Holland, the mission director in NASA, while they conduct a meeting about a Russian communications satellite named ICON. The old communications satellite is no longer responsive and currently in its decaying state. If no due action has been done in the next 30 to 40 days, the satellite will crash and burn up the Earth's atmosphere. While Sarah thinks it is best to just let it crash due to its old quality, Russian General Vostov argues that ICON is a very important communications satellite to the Russian Federation. He disapproves of letting ICON crash, since its loss will not only impair the Russian telecommunication infrastructure, but may also spark a civil war. The meeting ends with Bob announcing that they will assist the Russians with their problem, assuring them about the situation. After the meeting, Sarah warns Bob that he is feeding the officials with bold-faced lies. They enter the control room of NASA to do a brief background check on the icon. As it turns out, ICON's guidance system responsible for controlling the movement of the satellite cannot be accessed by anyone from NASA because it is outmoded. Sarah also discovers that the systems of the ICON are configured to those of Skylab, the first United States space station. While she looks up Skylab's designer, Bob grudgingly replies that he knows who it is and reveals it to be Frank. Meanwhile, Frank spends time inside their garage with his wife, Barbara. He effortlessly repairs their garage door and proudly talks about not having to read the instruction manuals because they are unnecessary and inaccurate. After a while, Sarah and an astronaut from NASA named Ethan Glantz come to their home looking for him. She relays all the important information and updates about the communication satellite icon, asking for his insight. Inside their house, Frank studies the satellite's blueprint with Sarah and Ethan to try to locate the problem. 
During the process, Ethan shares their findings that there may be a problem on the satellite's manual routing drive. Frank, however, disagrees with them. It leads to a miscommunication between them as he dismisses the judgment of the modern engineers. Sarah informs Frank that his design of the guidance system was ahead of its time for a while, but that it is already obsolete in the present. Frank then advises them to capture the satellite and bring it back to Earth, because it was not designed to last for so long. Eventually, he learns that they are unable to carry the satellite back because it is massive and a Russian satellite. Upon hearing this, Frank becomes surprised that his guidance system has been used for another spacecraft without his knowledge. To make matters worse, he also finds out that Sarah and Ethan work under Bob, who has not only betrayed Team Daedalus, but also taken credit for all of his work. In response, Frank takes the favor personally, firmly telling Sarah and Ethan to leave their house. That night, he reviews his guidance system, briefly glancing at a photo of Team Daedalus. The next day, Frank visits Sarah in her office and offers a possible solution to their problem. The two of them enter Bob's office as he and Frank reunite after a long time. Inside, Frank and Bob exchange sarcastic comments with each other, igniting tension in their conflict. Sarah interrupts them and get them back to the problem of the communication satellite. Frank claims that the satellite cannot be fixed from Earth, but then casually offers his help to Bob and Sarah, telling them to send the entire Team Daedalus up in space so they can manually repair it. Bob finds the idea absurd, mocking him for his old age before sending Sarah out of the office. To which Frank replies, acknowledging that Bob is only forced to seek his help because he is already running out of options. Bob strongly disapproves of the idea of sending Frank and the rest of the Team Daedalus in space, reasoning that with 40 years having passed, every member is of old age and no longer capable. He also admittedly agrees that he is forced to approach Frank, blaming the problem on him and his flawed design. In response, Frank insists that his design is not flawed, proceeding to confront Bob about his design being used on a Russian satellite. His sudden remark leaves Bob speechless and Frank stares at him in disappointment, setting the condition that he will only help if Hawk, Jerry, and Tank will fly with him. As Frank walks out of his office, Bob chases after him and agrees to his deal, but explains his terms with Frank, saying that Team Daedalus must be able to meet the physical requirements for the trip and pass the training program. He also requires them to cooperate with the current astronauts and fix the problem side by side, to which Frank agrees. One by one, Frank calls in the members to gather Team Daedalus. He first visits Tank in the middle of his sermon and Jerry while testing a roller coaster. Both of them cannot believe the invitation at first, but nonetheless immediately agree to participate. He approaches Hawk last after losing contact with him for many years. When Hawk asks what made him reach out again, Frank answers that he is filling his promise 40 years ago. Hawk is confused with his answer, so Frank catches him up on all the details, informing him that Jerry and Tank are waiting for them in a nearby pub. But Hawk only sends his regards to them. Thinking that Hawk has declined his invitation, Frank goes ahead to the pub to meet Jerry and Tank. To his surprise, he finds Hawk already waiting for him inside, implying that he has agreed to join the expedition. Team Daedalus assembles and together they enter NASA to undergo the required training. Frank introduces Hawk, Jerry, and Tank to Sarah, who welcomes them on board. Meanwhile, Bob talks with a Russian general inside his office. The Russian complains to Bob, saying that Frank and his team are not astronauts. Bob relieves him that Team Daedalus will not be going anywhere because they will not pass the physical trials adding that his best young astronaut is training alongside Frank, gaining proficiency in the outmoded guidance system. The Russian general still doubts the plan and suggests consulting with the other Russian officials, but Bob strongly cuts him off. Later, Sarah facilitates an overview briefing regarding the mission of Team Daedalus with the Icon communication satellite. She introduces the four men to the board, calling them the pioneers in the field but they receive judgeful glances from the modern astronauts. The briefing continues as Sarah discusses that the staging time for their mission is 30 days 
explaining that Team Daedalus's mission is to intercept and capture the icon before repairing its guidance system. Flight director Eugene Davis asks why they should bother to repair the guidance system when they can just capture the satellite and bring it back to Earth. Frank listens to Eugene closely, as he has also previously thought of that option. But then again, Bob simply answers that the Icon satellite is too massive to be brought back. After the briefing, Eugene confronts Team Daedalus and Bob regarding the mission. Being highly skeptical about their capabilities, he assigns two of his best young astronauts, Ethan Glantz and Roger Hines, to fly with them. The four men also undergo a series of medical tests through the lead of Dr. Ann Carruthers. During their eye checkup, Frank, Hawk, and Tank easily see through the letters. Jerry's vision is completely blurry and is not able to see anything, but he manages to pass the test after memorizing the letters on the eye chart. The four of them are forced to strenuous activities such as running for miles and lifting heavy weights to which they evidently struggle. While eating lunch, Ethan, Roger, and the young astronauts make fun of the aging men as intentionally send nutritional drinks on their table. Despite that, the four men toast with the astronauts, gratefully consuming drinks. The next day, Sarah informs Team Daedalus that Eugene has scheduled their simulator run, which will give them the feel of an actual spacecraft's takeoff. Jerry and Tank ride first, completing the simulation with ease. After them, Hawk and Frank follow. Hawk, being a daredevil pilot, feels bored with the simulation, causing him to increase its speed. The simulator reaches at high speed, urging a number of NASA staff and astronauts to watch them with curiosity. Just then, Eugene arrives at the scene and presses on the emergency button to quickly stop their simulation. Eugene scolds Frank and Hawk for their behavior, telling them that the simulator is not a toy. Even so, the two tease Eugene, making him walk out of the room. During the night, Team Daedalus hangs out in a pub. While drinking, Frank gets involved in a fight after a man provokes him. Hawk gets in between them, warning him to not engage because he needs to be in good shape for the mission. As Frank insists that he won't get hurt, Hawk confronts him about his temper, saying that he could blow up their chances again in flying to space. A heated argument then arises between Frank and Hawk. The night ends with the two of them punching each other outside the pub, giving each other a black eye. The following day, Eugene facilitates another simulation to check on the men's skills in landing their aircraft. Hawk and Frank undergo the simulation along with the young astronauts Ethan and Rogers. The contrast between the two pairs are evident when it comes to the gap in technology and technique. Ethan and Rogers smoothly land the aircraft, accustomed to its new and advanced technology. On the other hand, Hawk and Frank come across various challenges while adapting to the sophisticated technology. The older astronauts crash on their first try, but effectively show off their obsolete techniques by doing manual control of the aircraft, without the help of a computer. Later at lunch, Team Daedalus gets back at the younger astronauts, sending them jars of baby food and picture books in return for their previous prank. Meanwhile, Sarah and Hawk get into a developing romance as the two of them have a date night. Sarah, curious about Hawk's fears, asks him about a time when he got afraid. Hawk briefly opens up about his wife, Jackie, telling her how they met and how he used to be really afraid of her. Sarah listens at Hawk intently, jokingly asking him if he is afraid of her before she leans in to kiss him. A few days later, Team Daedalus' involvement in the mission was leaked in the newspapers by a paparazzi. Sarah is unbothered by the leak, while Bob is worried about the impending reactions of the public. At the same time, Roger and Ethan tour the older astronauts inside a model space shuttle, familiarizing themselves with the new living environment. Tank and Jerry also continue to make progress in studying the latest technology on the spacecraft's navigation. Eventually, Team Daedalus is introduced to the public, attending live guestings in which they receive positive feedback. While the team are close to finishing their 30-day training, Frank finds out from Ethan about Bob's initial plan of not sending them to space. He angrily barges into Bob's office and rants at him all over again for being unfair with their deal. 
Bob argues that there was no deal in the first place because Frank blackmailed him and adds that even if they really were sticking with their deal, Frank lost since one member did not pass the medical tests. Seeing the results, Frank discovers that it was Hawk who failed the physical checkup because he is diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. However, due to the popularity the four of them gained, the US vice president, who is the head of the program, insists that they must fly for the sake of publicity. Meanwhile, Hawk has just found out about his illness, learning that he has only eight months to live. Sarah approaches him while he spends time in the aircraft parking area. She talks about various ways to cure his cancer, such as chemo and radiation, but Hawk rejects treatment, saying that just sitting around waiting is a lousy way to die. Right then, Frank catches Hawk being affectionate with Sarah under one of the rocket planes. When she leaves, Frank reveals that he, Jerry, and Tank are given the go signal to join the mission, but he hasn't agreed because of Hawk. In response, Hawk scolds Frank, saying that they should leave without him because it is the last shot at their long-awaited dream. Even so, Frank is firm on having the whole team Daedalus fly in space. He and Sarah successfully convince Bob to reconsider Hawk for the mission. During their final preparations, Dr. Ann knows about Jerry's eye condition. She does not tell anyone else and instead prescribes him with custom-made glasses. Soon, the old and young astronauts make their way to the space shuttle Daedalus as the day of their takeoff arrives. They are all cheered by the public, and their friends and family bid them farewell, awaiting their triumphant return. When the space shuttle Daedalus successfully leaves the Earth's atmosphere, the four old astronauts cheer for themselves for finally achieving their dream after 40 years. As the Daedalus spacecraft slowly approaches the Icon satellite, Frank senses something strange about it. From the NASA control room, Sarah and Eugene also notice something unusual about the satellite's appearance. Frank and Jerry wear the protective spacesuits and explore the icon, only to discover that it is not a communication satellite. It carries six nuclear missiles along with artifacts from the Cold War, making Russia violators of international space law. Thus, Eugene and Sarah confront the Russian general, who admits the truth about the satellite. Having given up, the Russian general reveals that the icon has floated dead in space ever since the fall of the Soviet Union. The six nuclear missiles on board are already aimed toward different areas inside the United States, putting civilians in danger. Ultimately, he tells Frank that his guidance system was stolen by the KGB, a group of Russian forces, from Bob's personal files. Bob, on the other hand, still denies his involvement with the Russians, claiming to know nothing about their actions. At this time, the crew of the Daedalus spacecraft decides to abort their mission on fixing the guidance system. Instead, they plan on using their small rockets to push the icon as far away as possible into space. Just then, the NASA control room detects that somebody is outside the ship. When Frank and the other astronauts look outside the Daedalus, they find Ethan approaching the guidance system and repairing it himself. Frank tries to convince Ethan to stop, but the young astronaut only listens to Bob's orders. Because of this, Ethan reactivates the icon and it bumps against the Daedalus spacecraft. The impact of the bump injures both parties as Ethan is knocked unconscious while Roger suffers a minor head injury. It also damages the spacecraft's computer systems, but the old astronauts successfully handle it. Afterwards, Frank and Hawk go out once again to retrieve Ethan while Tank and Jerry attend to Roger's aid. Once they have reached Ethan, Frank and Hawk plan on discarding the missiles inside the Icon by firing it away into deep space. However, it can only be done if someone will stay inside the Icon and navigate it. In an instant, Hawk instructs Frank to return with Ethan to the Daedalus. Frank, Tank, and Jerry figure out that Hawk is thinking of staying on the satellite and sacrificing himself. They strongly protest against his idea, but Hawk insists on doing so. He attaches himself to the icon as Frank activates the nuclear missiles. The three members watch in sorrow as Hawk drifts away while directing the icon toward the moon, where he has long wanted to visit. Inside the NASA control room, Everyone turns silent at Hawk's heroic gesture while Sarah weeps quietly on her spot. Eugene approaches her shortly after, reporting about another major problem for the remaining crew in the Daedalus. 
because of the damage brought by the previous bump, much of the systems of Daedalus can no longer function. As soon as they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, the crew will have to pilot the spacecraft manually in the absence of their chief pilots Hawk and Roger. Eugene and Sarah inform the crew that the survival probabilities for this is low, but the crew gives it a try nonetheless. Frank and Tank take the pilot seat and slowly they advance to the Earth's atmosphere. Frank advises the crew that he will direct the spacecraft on water, but the Daedalus moves too fast and they miss their timing. They decide to safely eject Ethan and Roger out of the Daedalus while Tank and Jerry stay with Frank no matter the risk. Frank tries to redo the technique that Hawk previously did during their flying simulation and they successfully land the Daedalus. Later, Frank stares at the moon with his wife Barbara, wondering whether Hawk made it to the moon. Throughout the end, the surface of the moon is flashed, showing that Hawk has successfully set foot on the moon right before his death.